I really want to make this film for Jace and for the people that hear about autism and don't know exactly what it is and just assume things right off the bat. I myself was a jaded teenager and I would see parents out in public struggling with kids flopping on the ground, screaming, dealing with all kinds of disorders and behavioral issues and I would just think like, oh why can't you control your kids, what's wrong with you? And it really makes me sick that I used to think like that and I don't want people to have this certain idea of what autism is when they actually don't know. And I just wanted to put it out there and put out what my opinions are and what my family goes through on a daily week to week basis and yearly basis. If there's one word I could say that completely envelops what autism is like and what our whole lives are like, it's taxing. It's taxing on everything. When I found out that Jace was diagnosed with autism, I was completely shell shocked. At first I was surprised and not knowing a lot about it, I was really unsure of what it was and what that was going to mean for me and the rest of our family. But I just remember sitting out in the waiting room an hour after we got the testing done for Jace and his mom was trying to calm me down and saying, like, it's okay, they're probably just, you know what I mean, just getting all the data and all that stuff. And I said, no, they're trying to figure out how to tell us that our child has autism without making me cry in the room. And we went in there and sure enough, right away, they were like, yeah, so Jace qualifies for autism spectrum disorder. And they threw a whole bunch of information at me right away, a whole bunch of help, because I think that they didn't want me to feel like, oh no, and let that sink in for a minute, like my child has a disorder and focus on that. They wanted to focus on the help that we received, but they were talking and honestly, I couldn't even hear them. It was like a bomb went off in my head and it, everything was ringing. I guess you would blame yourself kind of first of all, usually get angry, think it's your fault, but you try to get your head around it and the doctor try to help you to tell you that it's, it's not your fault. The only words I could get out were, what did I do wrong? Like, what did we do? And I was thinking back to my pregnancy, I didn't drink, I didn't smoke, I didn't do anything like that. And they assured me that it wasn't my fault or anything, but that just felt like I got kicked in the stomach and that feeling's never really left me so far. Say my, my name. Eh. Name me. is Ch is Jace. Jace. Good job. So ASD is a complex developmental brain disorder. It's caused by a combo of genetic and environmental influences. It has varying degrees of all sorts. It causes difficulties with communication, social behavioral challenges. There's repetitive behaviors, and it is a lifespan order. And so far, there's no cure for it. Although they are continuing to work and look for one. The rate for nationwide so far is an estimated one in 68 diagnosed children are on the autism spectrum. And they show the early signs of autism as early as two, up to three years of age. The people that I knew were far more severe, so that I think caused more worry in myself because I was, I was like, how am I going to deal with uh, my son if he is like this person? But then as you, go through and learn more about autism, you learn that everybody is so different and each person is very unique in their own way. And you can't really take one person and, and judge that this is what your son or daughter is going to be like. <laughs> hey! <laughs> what song is that? <laughs> He's really in tune to music. He loves singing with his dad, which is so cute. They actually sing into the microphone together that Eric has set up in the basement. Even when he was little and he could first crawl, he'd play with the strings on Eric's guitar. He loves guitars, he loves microphones, he loves anything musical. He's always had the, I think, musicalness in his soul kind of thing. Um, he really gravitates to Eric when he sings and when he plays guitar. He went through a long process of applying for respite and IBI. IBI is intensive behavioral intervention and it's basically like a school for kids with autism. And what it is, is he has one-to-one -one support at all times. At some times he has two-to-one support. So what that means is he has therapists that come in and stand right next to him and they help him through his whole day. And he learns all kinds of communication and gets through difficulties with that. He gets through peer support. He learns how to make friends. He basically gets ready for school is what it is so that he can transition into the normal world and with as little problems as possible. 
The wait list, unfortunately, for IBI is extremely long. Some places, it's like four years long. We didn't think Jace was gonna get into it before he was seven, and thankfully he got into it super early. Um, if it wasn't for IBI, for my child personally, he would not be anywhere near where he's at now. We'd have, be having way more difficulties than we're currently having. I guess you could say he would have qualities of an OCD person at some times, but at others, total opposite, where he, he doesn't need any structure or he doesn't want any structure. Or perhaps if he was uh, playing with cars or something, most kids would be driving them all over and grabbing different ones and, and playing with them like cars, where Jace would rather line them all up in nice lineups, and then he just wants to like check them out. Yeah, usually what happened if he had something lined up that that he felt should be lined up, then if you tried to take it out of order whatsoever, he, he could not be able to handle that, and he would have to make sure the car is back facing the right way, facing the way that he wanted it. I worry on and off about him with his sister, more so the fact that he might not be paying attention to her, like you should be paying attention to a baby, or. He, he might just step around her or bump into her and not really think about it as being a danger, but he could knock her down and hurt her. He might not even realize it, but most of the time I think he pays her the proper attention and actually does really well for, for the most part. Say hi, Dory. Hi, Dory. Good job. So this is Jace's, they call it PEX. What PEX actually stands for is Picture Education Communication System. To start with, they just want a child to grab one off, put it back on, and that is, is kind of a form of speaking. And eventually you actually take into account what the pictures are saying. So if a child wants milk, he'll take the milk off and put it down for you saying that he wants milk. And eventually we'll be able to cut this out totally and he won't need the pictures and he'll hopefully just ask you for milk itself. The way it changed my relationship with Eric, let me see. Um, when somebody says, what's your idea of a date night? We're basically like, what's a date night? We, <laughs> we haven't done anything I think together that involves not talking about the kids, not bringing at least one child with us because there are people that literally have to be qualified to watch Jace. We can't just call somebody up and say, hey, do you want to come watch my child so that he and I can have some private time and go out for dinner? Um, it has to be his respite worker who has tons of years experience or one of our parents that have been dealing with this for years, and that is it. Dealing with a child with autism definitely affects your relationship with your girlfriend and other loved ones. Dealing with normal situations is not quite the same sometimes and you, you always seem to find more stress and everything. I find everyone living with Jace and having to deal with Jace the way he is, it kind of made our family come together better and be able to communicate better. It's kind of, I think, given everyone a lot more patience and we've learned to solve problems together because everyone has to be on the same page to solve the problem whether it be a simple problem like he's just freaking out or trying to figure out what he needs in the long term kind of thing. So you really got to work together as a unit to, to be able to accomplish it or it's going to become very stressful if you try to handle everything on your own. I think like one of the most positive things is when Jace first got the diagnosis um, and he was starting to say like one or two words here and there, Eric was working away quite a bit and because of that I think Jace wanted all of his family members to love each other and every time we'd be with his parents or my parents, whenever family was around, especially when Eric couldn't be here, he would make everyone hold hands and hug each other and give each other kisses and hug him over and over and over again. I think because he missed his dad so much and because he wanted everyone to feel what he feels I think for everyone else. He's so loving as a child that it's it's just the best. He doesn't have a mean bone in his body. He's crazy and he's wild, but he's not mean whatsoever. Advice I could give, really, I guess the best advice would be to 
sometimes maybe take a couple steps back and have a little more patience and try to really educate yourself as much as you can about the disorder and all the wide range of aspects that go along with it. I definitely would say I do have my days where it eats me up like crazy and I worry about things that I have no business worrying about right now, like what Jace is gonna be like in five years and I try not to let it get ahead of myself. And Eric's always telling me to just relax and to, that everything's gonna be okay and, every, and all that stuff. But it, it is a weight on me because five years ago I thought my kid's gonna learn three languages by the time he's five and he's gonna be the best and he's gonna be a sports athlete and all this stuff. And now I'm like, I just wanna hear the words, I love you mommy in a full sentence. And that just breaks my heart that I set such high standards for my child back then and for my children in general that I pictured having instead of just accepting them how they are and, um, and how our family could grow. Red one. This one. Get it. This one. Red one. Here, get this apple. Look. Grab it. Pull. Grab it and pull. Look. Grab the apple. Pull. Pull, pull, pull. There you go. 